It's not it does same. sound different. Have you ever sucked a pencil? It's not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I've cheated on that. <laughs> Hey there, everyone, and welcome to Galaxy Con Live, where we bring the convention experience directly to you. I'm your host for today's panel, Mario Bueno. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. Ever since audiences were greeted by these iconic lines and iconic notes back in April 1998, courtesy of the legendary soundtrack by Japanese composer Yoko Kano, Shinichiro Watanabe's neo-noir sci-fi western has gone on to not just become a classic of the anime medium, but an evergreen gateway for countless generations to come after. In its 20-plus years since its first release, it has gone on to garner so much popularity that an upcoming live-action adaptation by Netflix is eagerly anticipated. And with that in mind, we are very excited to reflect on the original animated classic with some of the folks who brought to life this wonderful story in the English language for the first time. So without further ado, let's start bringing them to our GalaxyCon stage. First up, you know them as Pikmons in Digimon Fusion, Governor Price in Star Wars Rebels, Dr. Priyanka Maheswaran in Steven Universe, and Julia in Cowboy Bebop. Please welcome Mary McGlynn to our virtual stage. Hello, Mary. How are you doing Aloha. today? Aloha. Really good. How are you, Mario? I am doing just fine. <laughs> you are coming at us uh, from from a wonderful time zone. I wish I could be uh, trading places coming at you from uh, Brooklyn, New York. It is definitely not as lovely as it is over there. <laughs> oh, Brooklyn is beautiful. Uh, a friend of ours, uh, Ashley Johnson, did a sh blind spot and she lived in Brooklyn. So we got to go visit her and we had a great time in Brooklyn. It was fun. Huzzah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be able to, to get you folks to come on by again uh, in, in the future. So thank you for that. Joining us here on our virtual stage, you know them as the voice of Barrett Wallace in Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, A, the fourth Raikage in Naruto Shippuden, Ogremon in Digimon, and of course, Jet Black in Cowboy Bebop. Please welcome Bo Billingsley to our virtual stage. Hello, hello, hello. Great to be here. Good to see you, Mario. <laughs> Good to speak to you as well. How are you doing over there, Bo? I'm doing great, doing great. Just uh, relaxing here in LA, baby. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I I am I'm so jealous of the both of you. <laughs> I love I love being here in New York. Just uh not this time of year. I would I would love to be either chilling chilling under the uh the the sunshine over in L A. or hanging out there on a a lovely beach side. <laughs> <laughs> but we are not done yet because we still have one more member to add to this lovely crew for today. You know them as Starscream in Transformers Prime, Zeb Aurelios in Star Wars Rebels, Wolverine in Wolverine and the X-Men and the Superhero Squad Show, and of course, Spike Spiegel in Cowboy Bebop, carrying this weight so you don't have to, it's Steve Bloom. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that was an amazing intro. Thank you, Mario. I was I was the one guy clapping for you really loud oh. in the background. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here as well. Always a pleasure to, to have all of you on any of our panels here at GalaxyCon. So let's jump right into it because I know we're going to have a, a lot of uh, excited questions from a lot of excited fans. Uh, like I said in my introduction, uh, Cowboy Bebop has gone on to not just become a, a classic of the anime medium, but an evergreen gateway. Uh, because of that timelessness, I figure let's start our Q&A off by just reflecting on, for each of you, what was the moment where it kind of clicked that there was something very special or timeless with this particular project? Uh, for me, it was watching, um, well, just watching the, the opening credits. That was my introduction to Bebop, was Yutaka Maseba and Kevin Seymour showed me Tank. And I was like, why are you giving this to me? Because I'd never directed a series before. So I was just like, Kevin said, because I have too many projects, I don't have enough time uh, to do it. And I'm very, very grateful that he was so busy. But for me, it was Spike walking into the church. And that first moment, I don't know if that's episode four, three or four or five, but that moment blew my brain apart and the soundtrack and everything else, unbelievable. So for me, that's when I knew, oh, it's our job not to mess this up. This is fantastic. Bo? Um, well, <laughs> to me, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's hard to think back about a, spe a special moment, but I, I remember being really taken by the music. And um, that 
you know, that that started the journey for me. And uh, I, I loved I loved the character once I realized and as Mary explained the, the project to me, because I thought it was about cowboys, you know, <laughs> <laughs> when I first came on uh, on board. But, um, yeah, the the the, um, the nature of Jet and in his position on 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 the bebop uh, really, really, really got to me. But I still had no idea it was going to be as uh, iconic and legendary as it has become. But I'm very uh, fortunate and, and, and feel very happy to be part of this family. Yeah. Uh, before Steve answers, real quick, just to kind of follow up on what you were saying, Bo, even in the intro, I made sure to, to mention, you know, the, the legendary seminal soundtrack by Yoko Kano. It is just an absolute banger that has held up so well uh, over the ages. Uh, and even even during lockdown, uh, there was that wonderful uh, anniversary collaboration that was put together. Uh, and that that was just a joy. So it's it's one of those things that uh, it's an element that really does make uh, not just this project, but all of uh, Watanabe-san's projects so special. You know, the the soundtrack. Uh, he's he's very good <laughs> at getting some some good good music to to back up his opuses. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, Steve. Yeah, we've all said that the soundtrack really was another main character in the show. It wouldn't mm -hmm. have been what it was without that. And I think the the first time I realized that this was something extraordinary was watching that opening sequence. And it reminded me of everything that I loved about like James Bond and uh, the colors, the movement. Yeah. The, the, the jazz soundtrack took it to a whole other level. It was, it was all of the great elements of, of film noir and uh, action movies and uh, something super exciting that I had not seen in anime before. And I thought, what the heck? hell is this thing that we're about to step into and uh it just that was just the launch pad it, it got better and better and better and better as the series and ultimately the movie went on so uh just continually surprised one sequence after another yeah uh again there's just so much to to kind of pick and choose from for you know these moments uh it not just for for fans but certainly for you folks who helped you know bring this to life especially here in the west so i uh, i don't blame you that it's you know such a such a such a, a, a difficult choice it's like a sophie's choice of actor moments it's like but this is so good but, but this is so good and then all this is so good oh god it's all so good yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank you for for that insight and for once again reaffirming that, you know, like Steve said, the soundtrack really is just another character. I know I keep going back to that, um, but it's it's one of the things that I think really does help to define you know, Bebop as such a, a unique property. Like even in the name, <laughs> you, you have these these roots for, you know, an entire musical style. Uh, it is it is just such a special thing. And I'm sure that there are so many folks who want to ask about many more special things and moments of all of you. So let's jump right into our fan questions. We have some waiting in the wings. Our first one is from Debbie. Uh, so speaking of things that resonate, what resonates with you the most about your character from Cowboy Bebop? Uh, uh, well... Here's the thing. I, I fell in love with uh, Steve's voice as Spike. So I was crushing on Spike really hard for most of the record. And he kept talking about Julia, about Julia, about Julia. And I said to Kevin, I, uh, Seymour, I said, uh, I, uh, I don't know if we ever see Julia, but if we do, I want to play her. Um, there was something so missing. And then when, when she finally um, did show up, there was something so mysterious and lost and and beautiful about their relationship and um and it translated into real life because uh steve and i are happily uh living in hawaii together and spike and julia stayed together so uh, spike and julia went off into the sunset <laughs> that's right yeah uh, well, for me, uh, it's probably when 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 Jet goes back to Ganymede, and it's the the elegy, and it was it was such a such a real emotional moment for me as Mary uh, ushered me through uh, that um, that dialogue and gave me all the time I needed to um, 
to reflect and, and, and make it real and, and, and experience it. So uh, those, those, those moments when Jet goes back to his past and puts it to rest, tosses the watch into the water, uh, that, was, that, was very, that was very special, very special for me. I think the thing that resonated most for me was that I got to step into the shoes of someone that I, I could never picture myself being in real life. And I spent so much of my life insecure and bullied and worried about what other people thought of me. And to get to play an entire series as the lead character, uh, as someone who really didn't care. He had no Fs to give, basically, walking through life. He he really he wasn't even sure if he was alive or dead or living the dream that to me was a, a relief it was almost a release of how i felt in my real life and i could go into that studio and become somebody else truly become somebody else i had played big broad characters before crazy things that was easy because that was what i did <laughs> since i was a little kid but to play a character in my natural voice that was so cool made me feel cool it was <laughs> it was really uh, transformative, I think, in a lot of ways. And and oddly enough, it also taught me to become more vulnerable as a as an actor and as a human being. I, I learned that in the process of recording this during that year or two years ago, whatever it was. Yeah, Bo touched on something really important is that we had the time. We had a luxury of time to really fine tune these performances and the character arc. And uh, as normally it's just boom, 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 go, go, go. But we, they gave us a lot of time. We had two weeks to do three episodes. And then I got a day and a half to two days to QC everything, uh, go back in, pull other takes uh, before it was shipped off to the mix. So we're very, very lucky that we had that much time to do, uh, to really put our heart and soul in, into it. You know? And Mary made great use of that time, beating us with a whip on, on the uh, <laughs> on the sink, you know. No, nope, I, I see, I'm thinking, yeah, that's, that feels pretty good. She said, nope, gonna have to do it again. I said, oh, Mary. <laughs> we can tweak, we tweaked it a little bit as we went, but yeah, that was one thing that always uh, bothered me about anime was, uh, uh, well, we had an amazing writer, Mark Handler, wrote to the flaps. I mean, really beautifully. So I'm um, oh, forever grateful to Mark for doing such an amazing job with the writing. You know, yeah. Mary yeah. also would take time for nuance, which we didn't really have on a lot of other shows. Yeah. Uh, there were every time you saw Spike smoking on screen she would provide me with a cigarette to stick in my mouth. I do it with a pen. I do it with my finger like we all do on all of our shows. It wasn't real enough to her ears. So she would actually give me one of her precious cigarettes when she was smoking at the time. And I would, I would take a, you know, a dry drag on the thing so that it would be authentic sounding and have it in my mouth while I was speaking when Spike did too, mm -hmm. uh, to the point where I, I was so afraid that I would ruin her cigarettes that I decided I was going to save it and use it each time. And I kept it with me. And every single time I would walk into the studio, the cigarette would just be disintegrated and fall over. So I pick it out of the bag. But I tried. I did try. Honey. I know. Yeah. Well, a pencil is heavier than a cigarette. I mean, it's I know. You know, it sounds different. It's not it does sound different. Have you ever sucked a pencil? It's not pleasant. <laughs> I've chewed on it. <laughs> I had so much trouble lighting that lead pencil, you know? Right. I mean, right. <laughs> Get the lead out, Bo. Get the lead out. <laughs> I can't follow the form with this, though. Oh, yeah. I'm not quite sure. It's nice and sharp now, though. There's it nice is. And sharp. Nice and sharp. Yeah, to, to kind of follow up on all these points that you made. Uh, first off, well played, Mary, for, for the best uh, indirect kiss uh, while on the clock <laughs> using the, the cigarette. So well played. <laughs> uh, but more more importantly, though, um, everything that uh, you mentioned, Mary and uh, Steve, you've followed up on uh, really plays into why, in particular, this this show's English language adaptation is considered by and large one of the best ever done because uh, like you mentioned a lot of care was put into it a lot of nuance was put into it hearing how the uh, the, the writing was adapted uh, so so particularly it, it really just hammers home you know why this show uh, not just as a standalone work in its original japanese but also with the english language adaptation is just 
certified classic all around. So thank you, thank you for that uh, insight as well. <laughs> So I believe we have some more questions waiting in the wings. Let's pull up what we've got next. This one is from Styles. Uh, what's your most memorable moment in the recording booth? I will be very generous and we will open this up to just uh, your careers as a whole. If there is something uh, beyond a Bebop moment that really kind of stuck with you that you would love to share with our wonderful audience today. <laughs> Steve, you go first. Uh, all right. I'm going to share two that are polar opposite things uh <laughs> one for for happy reasons and one for something else uh well actually no there i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna back up there was a moment when uh i was allowed to bring my dog into a booth i i wanted to be one of those people who could bring their animal into a booth it wasn't during bebop it was during another show but working for a lot of the same people at the time and uh i had this dog uh andrew who was old uh, really decrepit beast, but really sweet. And I thought, you know, all these other actors are bringing their dogs in. I want to bring mine in too. So I brought Andrew into the booth and he sat down on the, the floor and he was pretty quiet for most of the session. It was a two hour recording session for an anime. Um, Michael Sorch was directing at the time. <laughs> and uh, um, Michael and his crew, whoever happened to be behind the glass, were very funny. They, they were a bunch of crazy comedians and they would be farting on each other. And it was, it was ridiculous. It was just a ridiculous bunch of kids in the booth. Well, Andrew, it, for some reason decided to uh, unload a big dump into the booth. And it was a booth about this size, very small carpeted, and it was a wet one. And it was so pungent. I couldn't finish the session. I had to, to come out of the booth and I had to, to clean it up. And uh, I, I did the best I could. And I, f I actually went back and finished my session. <laughs> I found out that Michael Sorich actually was the next one into the booth. He had to do his character and he was in there for two hours oh, no. and had to uh, breathe in those fumes after uh, unleashing that on us for years in the control room. So uh, that was kind of a glorious moment for me. Um, <laughs> It was just sweet revenge. So thank you, Andrew, who has uh, long been departed. But uh, yeah, not the typical answer you would get, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave the other one alone. Go ahead, guys. I, I've, I've never heard that. So why have I not heard that story? Oh, my God. Did he not deserve <laughs> that? really blessed this day. <laughs> Did, Did Sorich not deserve that? Yeah. I, oh my God. Well, I can't, I can't even come close to that. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll have to say that um, when we were doing, uh, I think it was Mushroom Samba, and uh, Jet was talking to his, his bonsai trees, and at one point he erupts and says, who, who, who am I anyway? <laughs> um, and I, you know, it just, it just dawned on me, he said, I'm, I'm voicing a stoned character. You know, I mean, he's, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would be voicing a stone character in anime. And it, it was, a, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. You know, my heyday was in the seventies. So I didn't do any illegal drugs, but, um, I might have, I might have been around somebody doing them. So anyway, yeah, yeah that Bo, was, Bo is was, so high right now. <laughs> yeah, California, yeah. man. <laughs> California. Hey. It's it's close. Yeah. <laughs> Burgeoning <laughs> industry. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Um, I think probably my one of my favorite things about the show was was working on Ed with Melissa Fawn. I mean, we just had so much so much fun just playing. I mean, it was full on let's play together. And we, we laughed every single session. We would laugh and laugh and laugh to come up with weirder, more wonderful things for Ed to do, but still have it be grounded in uh, what the truth of, of Melissa's brilliant acting to it. So uh, I loved that. But I have to say my favorite was there was a video game that uh, was supposed to come out and we did like one, the, the opening six minutes or something of it. The outtakes from that particular record between <laughs> Steve and Bo were so good and so filthy and wonderful. So I think that was probably my favorite. You guys just, you know, we, we became a family after a while. It was the gift yeah. that kept, 
kept on giving and still does, you know? Yeah. Oh, that is uh, that is wonderful. Uh, it, it's it's always good when you can have you know those those kinds of uh, very treasured memories from you know this kind of collaborative project to to really you know bring with you, <laughs> even if you can't exactly share it with the rest of the world. It's it's one of those things. It, it's like that inside joke just for you. That's that's yeah. lovely. <laughs> you know, back in the day when we were recording the series, you know, we were using paper. You know, you guys remember paper? I don't know if you remember paper. But, uh, <laughs> so do we can I think I have vague it. recollections of this thing you would scribble on. I think it was with that pencil thing you were talking about that you used to yes. smoke cigarettes. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. But uh, so we, we could we could leave notes to each other. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I mentioned this uh, not too long ago, Steve. That um, Steve left a note uh, for me. He said, "Hey, hey, Bo, Jet sucks." <laughs> and so I went further up into the into the script for when he's coming in next, and I wrote, "Hey Steve, Spike sucks, but the Bebop is my ship." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was we we you know we didn't record together, but it, it's uh so, so ironical that or ironic that we became such a close family. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Bo even tried to teach me how to play golf once. <laughs> oh, that's I right. Didn't. We were in Florida, right? Yeah, I didn't do very well. No, you did well. Have to... for the first time. No, you really did. You did well for the first time. I, I had to go borrow somebody's shirt, as I recall, because I didn't have any shirts with collars on them. Yeah, you had to have a collar. <laughs> yeah, <on>. they <laughs> were. Uh, they, they were that strict at that range, huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah they were. Yeah. They were. Yeah, and Bo was so patient. He was so patient. I think that's when we really bonded. Was, yeah, you know, yeah, we were we just did. so we kind. And I was like hitting it like a baseball, and you're going, no. <laughs> You weren't that bad at all. You were very good for the first time, or you really were. Oh, You're coordinating. Apparently, you know? that check cleared, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So there, there we go. Uh, Bo's Bo's secret side hustle revealed. Golf instructor exactly. <laughs> extraordinary. Yeah, he's really good. I'm sorry, golf, golf like instructor to the stars. There. <laughs> yeah, he's really good. Oh man! <laughs> so uh, yes, let's uh, get to our next question. This one is from Da. I love that. <laughs> it's a great mm -hmm. name. What scene from the anime do you want to see most in the live action adaptation? Oh, there's so many. Mm -hmm. There's so. <laughs> many. What's the? Uh, it must. I think it was Mushroom Samba where where Spike's walking up the stairs and just walking and walking, and the frog come oh. you know appears on the staircase. Um, that uh, obviously the the church scene uh, with vicious. Uh, oh, there's so many. There's one chase scene where uh, Spike is in the. Um, and the swordfish and da -da 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 -da. and he's he's flying under the bridges and stuff i don't remember mm -hmm. what what episode that was in but i i don't know that they could have really done that live action well until now it would have been so expensive yeah. to yeah. shoot or create that thing i would i would love to see that thing brought to life i hope they do and there were right. scenes mm -hmm. with Faye and her ship at the same time it was oh my god it was amazing yeah I, I go back. I go back to the, the stoned moment. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I like to see Mustafa do that. You know? uh, yeah, he's being stoned. But no, that, that moment when you walk in in the Teddy Bomber episode and he's like, "My man!" My man. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's one of my favorite moments. Yeah, that's true. That was a nice moment. I used nice to moment. greet you that way for years. Yeah, that's, that's for years mm -hmm. you did it. She said, yep. oh, my man. <laughs> my man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that That is when you know that you nailed the line perfectly. <laughs> it's just <laughs> sticks, right. with, yeah. sticks with you for years. <laughs> Uh, so there you go. Uh, we'll we'll be waiting and seeing. It's just a few days from now, so we'll we'll get all these answers and hopefully more. Uh, next up for questions that need answers, this one is from Jason. We are going a bit more broad with this one. What first got you into voice acting? A horse named Cher. <laughs> Seriously, I was doing Xena Warrior Princess, and I got hurt on set while I was attempted. Uh, well, I was being hanged on a horse named Cher. And Cher reared up, fell on top of me, dislocated my kneecap, and I came back and I started doing uh, voiceover at uh, Magnitude 8 and through Animes and Yutaka and Kevin. 
So a horse name share got me into it. Name share. That's a, that's <laughs> nice. That's nice, sad, but nice. I, you know, it's I'm gonna write a song about it. I think it's more of a song. <laughs> okay. Horse name share. <laughs> <laughs> gotta and do I the share. Be, uh, the the wobble though. Singer for that one. I can't. Horse name share. If you believe in share. <laughs> But uh, what got you into anime? Well, uh, Doug, <laughs> voiceover. Doug, or voiceover, Doug Stone, sorry. Doug Stone got me into voiceover. Um, oh, he, I'm not even sure how I met Doug, but he was, I don't know if you remember, he was, uh, uh, I guess it was his title was producing um, the, 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 the dubbing of foreign live action films. So there were, mm-hmm. there were a couple of, of German films that had an, an African actor in it. So, um, I guess I was the go-to guy for that. So he said, would you like to, I said, yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. You know, I, I can talk like that because of my father, you know, so it's like a, a general Wakanda accent. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so in, and, you know, back in the day, we, we were lucky we had time codes, you know, no beeps or anything. So we had time codes and, and we, you know, we just chased the scene and, and like people say, there's no memorization and voiceover, but actually there is because you can't, you can't match flaps with your head down like this. So you have to grab a chunk of the material in your mind and, you know, and, and chase the scene. So that's, that's, that was the start of my career, but actually way back in 1969, I did the voice of a coach in a puppet movie. And I had forgotten about that. And so uh, you know, when people start talking about my voiceover career, I, I was thinking of the 80s, but it had dawned on me like a month or so ago that I actually did a, a, a voiceover in a, in a movie and, you know, over 50 years ago. And, uh, and then I've come home, I've come full cycle. So now, cause my career is basically voiceover now. And, and that's how I got started. And then Doug is also the one who said, he asked me, he asked me if I wanted to uh, voice um, a character in anime. And my response was, "What's anime?" Because <laughs> I didn't know what it was. It hadn't it hadn't become such an integral part of our culture as it is now. But uh, so, uh, thanks, Doug. Mm. <laughs> uh, pizza, pizza is what got pizza. me into voiceover. I pizza. was offered. Free I love pizza. this already. <laughs> okay. Offered free pizza to come and audition for a Japanimation program. That's why you didn't know what anime was back then. Oh. Was the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was the only guy working in a mailroom that didn't really want to be an actor. I wanted to be a musician, but they off they offered me free pizza to come in and audition to do some creature stuff on a Japanimation program. And all my friends were doing it. Literally, that's the only reason I came. And I was a little disappointed that I actually had to work for my pizza. I thought I could just audition, fail, and still get to eat the pizza. But I ended up working the whole day and ultimately be, became a career. But that was the genesis. And it wasn't even very good pizza, as I recall. <laughs> mm, that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> However, this reinforces the power of pizza. <laughs> yeah. When you're, when you're a starving musician, any kind of pizza is good. So. Yeah, well, it's like any actor, right, early in your career. Free food? Where? Yeah. Where? I'm going. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. in. Yeah. I'm in. Oh, that is I, I'm keeping that one in my back pocket. <laughs> that's, that's just fantastic. <laughs> oh pizza, man. So, pizza and a horse named Cher. I mean, you can't beat the name yeah. Pizza. yeah. 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 And, and and then uh, you know, the 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 cyclical journey of Bo <laughs> in terms of mm-hmm. in terms of your your journey. Like mm-hmm. that uh, that's just wild when you have those moments, these epiphanies that make you realize, oh man, I, I've been doing this the whole time. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. A little Doug so, Stone on top. Yeah, a little, <laughs> sprinkle a little Doug Stone. <laughs> So our next question that we have waiting in the wings is from Kevin. If you could write a story arc for your character, what would you like it to be about? Well, I'd love to to hear the origin story of Spike and Julia. I think that would be amazing. 100%. Yeah, I was just going to say something prequel. I, I really want to know what happened before they met mm-hmm. in, in greater detail. And maybe even starting earlier on, flashbacks to their their childhood and that sort of thing. It's, there's a lot that we don't know. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, how did Spike and and Bo? I mean, Spike and Jet meet. You know, right? Do we know yeah. that? 
how they got together? Uh, I don't know what the genesis of that was. I don't. I don't. I don't, either. I don't either. You probably arrested him or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think yes, that's had a run in many moons ago. <laughs> yeah, that's probably how they met, right? Because yeah. because Jet was a, a law enforcement officer and part of the syndicate. Yeah. yeah, so Spike doing his nefarious deeds. So that's probably how they. And so they're odd. They're they're an odd couple now. Yeah, so yeah. It'd be yeah. Interesting to explore that. Our love uh, began with a traffic ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that, honey. Yeah, yeah. I remember, no, the first, I, I, I remember the first time Spike blew smoke in my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he didn't have a cigarette at the time, so it was really odd. <laughs> That's and right. And, and, and I found out it wasn't a cigarette, and then yeah. I was. It was I, my shift. <laughs> and that's how we got to that scene. There right. we go. We're filling See? in the, filling You're in the welcome. Here. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Going to clip this and uh, send it on to Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, okay, so that, that definitely uh, covers that one. Let's move on to our next question. This one is coming at us from Christy. If you could hang out with a character you portrayed, who would it be, and what would you like to do? Hmm. Huh. Any character? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to open it up to uh, any character that, that you've played throughout your career. Oh. I don't know if that makes it easier or harder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That does make it harder. Um, yeah. uh, um, probably uh, Gilman from Digimon. Yeah, yeah, that would be a fun day, and yeah, pretty much, pretty much doing anything, running around with boxes over our heads, uh, chasing food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pretty much doing anything with Gilman would be fun. Just to to view the the world through those innocent eyes would be pretty yeah. good at, at this advanced age. That'd be fun. Right, you, you, you take me back to Ogremon now. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I we all voice a lot of characters. I voice Ogremon, Digimon, uh, was it Ogremon, Ogremon, Sagittarimon, Parrotmon, and I tried to get him to do Jamaican Mon, but nobody was buying it. You know, Yaman. <laughs> His name would just be Yaman, right? Yaman, yeah, yeah. Yaman, Leoman, <laughs> Irimon. It's Irimon. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, Jamaican friends, if I uh, no, <laughs> no, own it. Just have to own it at this just point. Time. Just yeah. embrace it. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't. Gosh, I had it. Oh, Kur and I maybe from uh, Naruto, just so she could teach me Genjutsu. That's what I would want. I want to be trained by Kur and I. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and, and um, doing the the fourth Raikage in Naruto. I mean, having all those special abilities. I guess mm -hmm. that would that would be fun. You yeah, know, that, that yeah, would be yeah, fun, yeah. Having those special. Abilities. Hey, we're all Kage, you know. We all are. three yeah. of us are Kage. Right, right. right. I'm the most <laughs> decrepit one. Oh my back! <laughs> I barf. I barf lava, which is you know nice. That's very oh. scary. That is yeah. very very scary. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I barf snakes. Yep, you do. Yeah. What do What do you barf, Bo? <laughs> uh, lightning. I barf yeah. lightning. Yeah. <laughs> don't mess with me now. Oh, a whole right. bunch of uh, unique party tricks that uh, that y'all could learn from uh, right <laughs> from your yeah, we're all in a party doing our special tricks, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm barfing lightning. Mary's barfing lava. You know, it's just like mm -hmm. this another day, another Friday night. You know, right? Yep. <laughs> Here oh, we go man. again. My ties, anyone? <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> yes. so there, there you go. Uh, in addition to you know having some some wholesome times with some some Digimon and also learning some badass martial arts, we're gonna learn some very unique party tricks with our characters <laughs> here. Yes, apparently, sir. this is the takeaway <laughs> today, kids. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, thought you wouldn't man. learn anything here at GalaxyCon Live, did? Oh yeah, no, you, it's, 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 you learned a lot today. Uh, yeah, I mean, Bo's learning things about you. We're learning things about all of you. It's a, it's, it's a grand old time. <laughs> Lots of learning today. And the next thing we would like to learn about, let's see who this one is coming from. This is from Lindsay B. They would like to learn what is a dream project 
for each of you. Now, whenever I hear this question, I would like to also open it up to make it a little bit easier. Um, it doesn't have to be something that hasn't been done yet. If it is something that has been done and it would have been, you know, something that you would have loved to have worked on in any capacity yourself, that is also fair game. Mm. Oof. I don't know if we've gotten to do so many amazing things. <laughs> like so many dreams have already come true in terms of like Lucasfilm and uh, DreamWorks and oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, I'd have to I'd think like, about I'd it. I'd like to. I'd like to do the story of my father's life. That that would mm. that would that would oh. be. Uh, you know, he he grew up in in um, in Georgia in not such great times for us, and but he made his way north and. Uh, he was, you know, he didn't even he didn't even finish high school, and be, but he was a mathematical genius, and he ended up working with uh, General Motors, and he, he invented all of these items. But of course, you know, the patents belong to General Motors, but um, mm -hmm. but you know, it was his mind. And I remember when I was a child, he would get called in off of his shift, like he'd worked a day shift, and then he'd get he'd come home, and then they have to they'd call him back because these college trained engineers couldn't figure something out. And here's this guy who went to the ninth grade solving the problem. Uh, mm. Just give you, an, and he was ambidextrous. Um, he could throw baseball right hand, left hand. And I remember seeing him throw a throw a, a rock and hit a pigeon in mid mid flight. Now I, I, know that, I know that you know that's just a freaky thing. But as a kid, to see your father do that, it solidifies <laughs> that your dad is Superman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But. Uh, but anyway, and he he would, he would like sleep four hours a night because he would work so much, and then he'd always be there for my games. As, you know, when I was eight to twelve playing sports, and it was you know, and I didn't appreciate it until I became an adult to realize what an extraordinary human being he was because he did civic work and 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 I remember asking my dad, "When did you sleep?" He said, "Well, I slept a little bit." <laughs> so, so modest. <laughs> okay, that's 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 that's, that's mine. <laughs> oh, that that sounds like an amazing biopic or you know just uh ongoing series so you know <laughs> get, yeah. get that in front of netflix <laughs> i'm it sure does. you've gotten in <laughs> just, I didn't go just to my association dark. with bebop <laughs> i did not go to the dark side where you know he couldn't buy property and all of that stuff you know yeah uh, yeah so he had to get a, a caucasian friend to buy his buy the property for him and he buy it from him and, and this is in connecticut where things were good so um wow. but anyway the aspects of of his life or, and uh, don't let me start it about my mama. So, okay, enough about me. <laughs> oh, you got to write this, Bo. I hope you, you seriously. I, I'm actually in the process of, of writing some stuff. It's my, it's basically my my autobiography, but it's a lot mm. about my mom and my dad. Wow. Oh, Bo, gotta do it, do it, do it. That's amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm forcing myself because some of it's not so great, but not so fun. But it it is something I I have to do. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Um. <laughs> Well, it's that's a tough one to follow. I know. Uh, I want to play the Joker. Like how? How do you? Feel? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. The only thing I can think of would be maybe doing a series um, based on Toonami, on on uh, Tom and the backstory of of Tom and and uh, just because we've we've been doing that show for twenty plus years and. Uh, we've done little vignettes here and there, but they're they always threaten to do a full season of uh, episodes based on those characters and and bring in the old uh, Clydes and stuff and and uh, and and Bo's character that came in in the last round and Booger, you yeah, called Booger. Booger, man. Booger, yeah, that's right. I called him Booger. <laughs> yeah, but that that would be really fun. I, I I hadn't thought about that in a long time. Um, but I, that would be really fun to do to flesh that out and, and play with it in a full series. Yeah. And, and, and after so long, you know, there's so much material to, to really dig into there. So yeah, yeah. it would be, it'd be a lot of fun and quite the nostalgia trip for yeah. folks like myself who, you know, really got into this medium, you know, because of the tsunami boom, really, <laughs> like, it, yeah. I, I can trace my personal, uh, anime fandom back to the year 2000, you know, Gundam Wing was one of my first animes I watched on TV. <laughs> yeah. and that that opened up my world to all this other cool stuff uh, over the the years since. So yeah, that would be that'd be a wild one. Well, and a so, show like yeah, and a show like that, we could bring back all of our friends that were in all of those classic shows from Two Nine Two. That would be amazing. 
Yeah, it'd be quite the the reunion project for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so before we Cartoon get to, Network, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fund it, Cartoon Network. <laughs> we we know where you are over there in Burbank. <laughs> we Old got Slim, you. Warner, whoever Just, wants uh, the pony up, we'll do yeah. it. <laughs> Worst case, uh, next time any of us uh, goes down to to Momocon, just you know, make a little pit stop over at William Street, <laughs> right? <laughs> drop a treatment. It's like we got you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We got you. We got you. Oh, Sorry, man. Jason. Sorry in advance. Sorry, Jason and Gil. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they see the ratings, they'll be like, "No, no, thank yeah. you, Steve. Thank you." <laughs> yeah. yeah, we want to get it done. So our final question of the panel, this one is from Callie. This one is uh, always, always a blast <laughs> with all sorts of different, sh different shows, but especially something as eclectic as Bebop. What other fandom would you like to see have a crossover with Cowboy Bebop? Hmm. Uh, well, you got to think about the time. Um like Battlestar or Star Trek or something. I don't know. I Dragon Ball. Fun. What Dragon Ball Z? Huh? Mm. <laughs> Goku versus Spike. Fund it. <laughs> Fund it. <laughs> Star Wars would be pretty fun. Yes. Yeah, there could be some interesting crossovers. Boba there. Fett walks in. <laughs> it's just like Bounty Hunter. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> bounty hunter versus bounty hunter. Right. We, yeah. need, we need to get we somehow we, we need to get fat bastard into there. <laughs> <laughs> get in my belly. Yes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> shit. Crap. <laughs> oh, that is that is a line I've not heard in many moons. <laughs> oh, that, that takes me back. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Weirdly, this is one that it, normally I, I sit back and hang back for the answers, and you know I'm just good to to roll with that. But one came to me as well, and I think it's a little fresh because we are getting an anime adaptation of it. Uh, I believe very soon uh, it finally releases on uh, Adult Swim slash Toonami. Uh, Blade Runner. Yeah. Time oh, time shifted yeah. just enough since there is a very close overlap in the uh, the time periods. Mm -hmm. You know. But having Blade Runner's, uh, you know, very neon drenched world with, you know, the space faring uh, antics of uh, the, the world of Bebop, that would be a trip, <laughs> mm -hmm. even just as a one off. It's like, just give us give us a, a, a contained mystery cross them over. Oh, that would be that'd be wild. <laughs> that would fit pretty well. Yeah, it would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, uh, good yeah. Too. Right. Right. Well, well, yes. Yeah. Hire all of us. We'll do it. Right. <laughs> can Mary Elizabeth be my love interest? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> listen, listen, Cartoon Network. We're just we're we're throwing bombs here. Yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got all this gold for you. Let's let's do a bunch of uh, one-off specials. <laughs> let's let's fund this and 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 then that uh you know whole Tom series. Let's let's just go with that. Uh, but in all seriousness, thank you so much to all three of you for coming on by. This has been an absolute joy. Thanks to all of you who have tuned in here. Again, head on over to galaxycon.com to see what we have going on every single weekend. There is something for every single taste. Every single Singles genre. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, stay informed, and we'll see you again soon at GalaxyCon Live. Take care, y'all. Take care. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> One more for the road.